Hey everybody, this is Eric Johnson. I'm the EVP of Engineering at GitLab, and this is my uh, fiscal year 21 um, Q3 How to Achieve um, OKR meeting. Uh, I'm messing around with uh, OBS and um, Ecamm Live, some streaming software this time around, so you can see I don't have a green screen yet. I can't do the cool thing where my face is floating over the page, um, but I thought some picture-in-picture -picture might be fun. And I've got some uh, other things going on, like sound effects, that I might be that I might be trying out, although uh, if I end up adopting this stuff for everyday work, I'm not going to be hitting buttons like that. Um, but with it, uh, without further ado, um, let me jump into uh, the review of our drafts for um, Q1, uh, Q3 OKRs, and um, we've got about another week to um, uh, hammer these out, massage them, change them before we kick off. Uh, but the first one, however, is here. Uh, this is the IACB objective as uh, so we're running GitLab.com more efficiently. There's three key results. The first one is to keep GitLab.com on our financial plan. Uh, primarily, the infrastructure department's going to be working on this. Um, the background here is that we overspent in Q1. Last quarter, we actually took on a KR to um, get back on plan, which includes... Um, being under plan for the quarter, as well as making up for that Q1 overspend, which we did. Um, this We're rolling this one over, however, because we want to make sure that we can um, do this on an ongoing basis. So there will be features that are coming online uh, that uh, will push cost upwards, and this is about making sure we're staying ahead of those things. Um, if we're successful again in Q3, we may not take on no care like this in the future. We may just say we're going to track it as a KPI, but I want to at least um, uh, make sure it's solid for Q3 before we do that. The next one is um, moving all GitLab.com stateless services to our stock Helm chart. Um, you can see uh, development and infrastructure are going to be working on this one uh, together. So this is um, pushing ahead with uh, Kubernetes um, and uh, making it easier for um, other people to spin up uh, large GitLab instances um, using modern cloud native technologies. And then the third one, our support department is going to be running. That's um, basically eliminating um, cost uh, of supporting free users. Um, I don't think there's any entitlements for support costs today, um, but of course we get support cases from free users. Um, so this is making sure they can answer their questions in a way that um, uh, we don't incur cost on our team, which is intended for uh, premium support today. The next objective is our product aligned ones. It's about increasing dog fooding. Um, the performance of the application and the productivity of our team. Uh, the first key result is about dog fooding. Um, there's multiple aspects of dog fooding. One is uh, if you're going to create some functionality, do it in the open source project itself rather than you know some side scripts or something like that. The next facet is um, taking a feature that's in the product that we're not using today for our own work and consuming it or using it. Um, and then there's other sort of aspects as well, uh, which you'll see. So th there's a bunch of teams that are going to be working on this. This is a huge initiative for us, um, multi-quarter as well. This is just Q3's bite out of this uh, initiative. Uh, but first, we're going to be taking our plan stage, the project planning and portfolio management features that we've got, and our sort of four-legged stool of product development, meaning the development department, the UX department, the quality department, and the product management division, um, all of whom take part in this. They're signing up for their own KRs uh, that align with the same objective to use more of those features, especially the newish stuff, uh, and make sure that that's integrated into our own process. Um, next is development and infrastructure um, uh, using our own monitoring feature set. Um, this is a rollover from Q2. In Q2, uh, we set the bar pretty high of end of life five existing dashboards in favor of our own. We did a ton of work in that regard um, but I don't think we quite got to any single one um, being end of life. Uh, so this work will continue and we'll raise the ambition level as well. Um, next is infrastructure dog fooding our Jupyter interactive runbooks for their own workflows. Uh, the next one is one of those unique aspects of dog fooding. This is uh, Jonathan Hunt and his security department basically authoring a position paper uh, product assessment from the security department's perspective of what they would like to see in the product and then working with product management to make sure they understand it and actually helping them populate their backlog with issues that uh, cover the gaps. And hopefully some of that stuff can be prioritized, if not all of them. And then the last one is uh, dog fooding security approval. So this is a pretty new feature. Basically what it allows you to do is um, say, if uh, uh, CI run flags that um, there's a certain vulnerability present in an application, 
um, uh, at a certain um, severity level, um, you can require approval from a department, probably our application security department, uh, before moving ahead there. So we'll use that um, uh, use that feature, and that'll be development implementing that. The next key result is uh, making um, GitLab uh, faster. Um, the UX department is going to be uh, migrating components to our UI library called Pajamas. Um, next is uh, development has a piece of that. The Haml components are going to be done by development. Some of the um, simpler things will be done by UX and the prior KR. And then um, also um, we're going to be um, uh, measuring performance with our speed index um, and making sure that uh, we have at least a 10% improvement on our explore page, which is one of the most performance intensive pages that we've got. Uh, the next key result is um, uh, our tried and true productivity ones. So Christopher, who runs our development department, is going to be ra uh, raising the MR rate from about eight today. We'll figure out exactly what the starting point is when we finish this quarter uh, from eight to 10. Um, and there's a change this quarter. We previously used the uh, development MR rate, which included open source activity and the development department. We recently took a decision to um, keep trapping that, tracking that metric, um, but to uh, break it up into, uh, into two pieces. One is the open source activity. You'll see uh, Mac and Quality is going to be driving that um, separate from Christopher's work down below. And then what Christopher will be driving with is the um, productivity of uh, members of his department as opposed to the community as a whole. And we think um, uh, driving the overall project efficiency with these two separate components is going to make us more uh, more effective uh, going forward. So this is the uh, member MR rate, not the overall MR rate like we tracked in the past. The next objective is our team objective. Um, it's about expanding the capabilities of our team. The first one is um, started a working group in partnership with people uh, operations to build and launch what we're calling an upstream diversity program. Um, so the background here is uh, our technical recruiting efforts um, are downstream from some bottlenecks, like the overall diversity in the technology industry from which we're recruiting, or the university program. We don't require a university degree, but the diversity in, in university computer science programs is not reflective of society. So um, in addition to the things the company's already doing, like we've switched to an outbound only recruiting model to uh, raise both quality and the diversity of our team simultaneously, we're going to take part in everything uh, that's going on there. This is an addition to that. So we're going to organize people with technical skills at GitLab um, who are uh, willing to teach uh, members of underrepresented groups in the technology industry how to code, how to network, how to do security, uh, whatever it might be, how to design perhaps, um, and uh, to give them kind of a head start and perhaps a way to get into the technology industry to improve society. Um, additionally, um, we're going to look at some infrastructure problems like connection to high bandwidth um, or access to a computer to see if we can help solve those things uh, as well, because there's places um, in economically depressed areas where you can't even take for granted that someone um, could access e-learning if we make it available. So we'll see if it's possible for us to address that. Uh, so that working group will run through the quarter, and uh, with luck, we'll be able to design and launch uh, the first iteration of our program together. So we're excited about that one. The next key result is to ship the first iteration of a uh, new architecture discipline or process within the company. Um, this will likely be a working group as well. We'll figure that out this week before we kick off August 1st. Um, essentially, what we're doing here is we've designed a new architecture process. What makes that unique at GitLab is our model is everybody contribute, right? So we're not going to have individuals with the um, title or role of architect, everybody can do architecture, but we will leverage DRIs. So we have um, engineering fellows, they will be the DRIs for a year long um, uh, artifact that goes into the handbook about uh, what we need to do technically with about a year horizon. Um, our distinguished engineers uh, will um, interpret that um, in their kind of local sub department like dev or uh, ops or secure um, on a six month horizon. And then uh, the staff engineers will uh, make sure that gets into OKRs for the following quarter. Um, so we're taking a bite out of that year long roadmap or that six month artifact uh, in a given quarter. Um, and while those individuals will be the DRIs for these artifacts, um, anyone will be able to take part and contribute, including maybe even some of our um, open source contributors. And then the last uh, KR here is, um, uh, I mentioned before, doing more uh, to engage directly with our community. Um, 
mech is going to be driving this. I think this KR is probably the one that's going to change the most throughout the quarter because it's really the first time we're explicitly engaging at this level. So I think we're going to learn quite a bit. Um, but what he's signing up for today is um, improving the uh, the automation and doing some outreach, some blogging um, with, about uh, getting more contributions to our project. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think there'll also be some interfacing with our community relationship relations team, uh, maybe a working group. I think we'll figure it out as we go. So um, this is one in particular where we're open to ideas and open to what our uh, ambition level should be. Um, but with that, uh, that is the overview for right now. Um, we've got, I'm recording this on uh, Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon. Uh, we've got the how to achieve synchronous meeting tomorrow. So um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and look forward to your feedback. And we've still got a week to uh, change or improve these as we go. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> more, uh, more sound effects, and I promise I'll stop before that gets annoying. All right. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>